The Laws of Spirit World by Khurshid Bhavangiri There is no religion in the spirit world. We worship one God only. To God, the one whom we owe everything, and my dearest sons, Vipsi and Ratu. Vipsi's prayer, My dearest God Almighty, please our Lord, help us to avoid all evil and save us from such evil creatures. Please take us in your hands and guide us. You are, you are, we are yours, our God, and we will be yours always. Keep us with you, our Lord, for eternity. So always and forever we will be blessed, guided, and helped by you and only you. Thank you, God Almighty. Preface Khorshad and Rumi Bhavangiri lived in Baikula in Bombay, India with their two sons, Vipsi, who was born on August 9, 1950, and Rato on December 13, 1951. As the boys grew up, they were extremely interested in all aspects of motoring. Eventually, Vipsi and Rato set up a garage for motor services and repairs. They also participated in several motor rallies. In the fateful year of 1980, Vipsi and Rato were to enter a 1,632-mile cross-country motor rally. The rally was to start on February 23rd, and Vipsi and Rato decided to take the car out for a trial run from Bombay to Khopoli before the event. Horshad narrated what happened just before their sons set out on their journey. Ratu hugged me tight, said goodbye and went out. He hardly went down a few steps. We lived on second floor. Then he came running back to the door to me. Again he hugged me tight and kissed me. I could not understand why, because this was unusual for Ratu. We went down one floor. Then once more he came running back to me and held me tight and hugged me. By then Vipsi came to wish me goodbye as well. I told them to drive carefully. They said, don't wait for us mama, we will go till Khopoli and return. Or we may stay overnight and come back tomorrow morning. Just as they got into their car, the boys met their father Rumi, told them to drive carefully. Rath replied, why are you worried daddy? In any case, we can't go over 30 miles per hour. Since we have just overhauled the engine, we will be alright. So at 8.30 that night, Vipsi and Rato set out in the high spirits along with two mechanics and a friend. When they did not return by 8 o'clock the next morning, Korshid and Romi began to worry. At 8.30 am, a mechanic from the boys garage came over saying, that there had been an accident somewhere near Kopoli and that both Vipsi and Rato were in hospital. Rumi rounded up a few friends and sped towards the accident site at Kopoli. There they found Vipsi and Rato's car smashed into a tree. Nobody was around but they learned that the boys had been rushed to the hospital a few minutes away. When Rumi got to the hospital, he was told that both Vipsi and Rato had been killed on the spot but the other occupants of the car had escaped with minor injuries. Rumi asked the mechanics what had caused the accident. All they said was, we were asleep one minute and the next minute there was a crash. Everything felt unreal to Rumi. He was fortunate to have his friends and neighbors with him to help with the formalities in the hospital. With a heavy heart, he returned home and wondered how to break this tragic news to his wife. As Rumi painfully climbed the stairs to his apartment, Korshad kept asking him from the landing, Why have you taken so long? Where are Vipsi and Ratu? Why can't you move faster? When Korshad heard the news, she broke down. She felt she had nothing to live for. Korshad's faith in God was shaken. I had been very religious, she said. Now, for the first time, I began to question whether there was a God. If there was a God, then why should he do this terrible thing to me? Snatch my sons away when I have never harmed a hair on anybody's head. I was ready to give up God, religion and life. Then something wonderful happened. 
on the 29th day after the funeral a neighbor named Mrs Dastur told Kharshed and Romi an amazing story Mrs Dastur's sister-in-law had gone to a concert and during the intermission overheard a lady speak of two boys who had recently died in an accident and wanted to send a message to their parents so Mrs Dastur's sister-in-law had taken down the lady's telephone number the next day Kharshed and Romi got in touch with this lady and she invited them to her house she had lost her brother and was in contact with him through a seance organized by a powerful medium named Mrs Kapadia on one such occasion the seance was interrupted by a cry from two young boys the boys said they had died in an accident and that their parents were shattered they wanted their parents to know that they were happy in the spirit world and not to worry as they could see their parents on march 22 1980 Horshet and Rumi attended a group seance at Mrs Kapadia's residence on Nepin Sea Road. Mrs Kapadia the medium sat in the center and others were seated around her. She moved from one person to another to assist them in their communication with the dear ones who had died. When Mrs Kapadia came to Bhavnagris the first word uttered by her were hello mommy fats so that was what Vipsi had always called his mother the fact that a stranger knew such an intimate detail was what gave Korshen and Rumi proof that it was their sons and this restored their faith in god Vipsi and Ratho then told their parents that they wanted to talk to them alone so Mrs Kapadia gave them the name of another medium an elderly lady called Mrs Rishi a few days later the bhavnagri spoke to their sons through mrs rishi they said mom and dad this is vipsi and ratho yes we died and reached the spirit world within minutes of our death it is god's will and god knows what is the best for each one of us god is good you must not cry for us or miss us we are much happier here we can see you all the time and are looking after you we cannot communicate with you until you are completely relaxed and happy you have to develop powers of concentration they also told her that she had to stay on earth to do her spiritual mission which was to help people and spread spiritual awareness over the next few months korshen and rumi with the help of their sons developed the powers of complete concentration and relaxation which made direct communication between the parents and their sons possible through a process known as automatic writing she would hold a pen lightly into a book concentrate intensely and gradually the spirits of her deceased sons would use her hand to move the pen slowly and unevenly over the page at first there were scratches but with the days of practice words form and she could ask questions aloud to which the answers would come written on to the book shortly after the boy's death a very unfortunate family problem arose and kurshan and rumi had to resort to litigation contrary to the advice of some lawyers who said they should not fight the case kurshan and rumi chose the lawyer on the advice that their deceased sons conveyed to them telepathically to their surprise against all odds the litigation came to a successful conclusion this was one more sign that bhavnagris were indeed being guided and protected after some time vipsi and ratu conveyed to their parents a desire to dictate by the same process of automatic writing and then telepathically a book containing the laws of spirit world for which they had obtained special permission from higher souls they thought it would be of considerable benefit to human beings on earth to know the true laws of god and the spirit world which if followed would help them advance spiritually it was the desire of vipsi and ratho that the book be dictated published and distributed widely however vipsi and ratho were very clear that their teachings and beliefs were not to be forced on anyone as friends and even strangers heard of kurshid's communication with her sons they came pouring in at the bhavnagri residence kurshid and rumi 
slowly realize that by reducing the pain of others through selfless service their own pain was being considerably reduced this was how they found solace after the death of their sons they provided guidance and comfort to both young and old by sharing their story they prevented people who had suffered a similar loss from being consumed by sadness they counseled people regarding problems ranging from addictions to physical abuse but eventually they nourished those souls who had a true thirst for spiritual knowledge and a desire to improve spiritually people pose questions both spiritual and personal many of those questions have been reproduced in part 2 of this book as there is no religion in the spirit world question and answers that relate purely to any particular religion have been excluded rumi and kurshid bhavangiri passed away in 1996 and 2007 respectively and happily reunited with their sons in the spirit world part 1 spirit communications from the journals of kurshid bhavangiri 14th April 1981 The Real Laws of God My dearest mom and dad this is Vipsi and Ratu speaking from the spirit world to make people on earth understand through you how to follow the right path all my deeds God almighty's own path so my dearest mom write this book for us and let your world know about the spirit world about the laws and the rules of God almighty which are misunderstood by people on earth and about the realms in the spirit world it is quite wrong to believe everything that your priest tells you and what great philosophers preach about the real justice of our god almighty they don't know all they or you will come to know all only when you leave from your earth plane and go to the spirit plane well it will not take just a few pages or a few chapters not even a few books to explain to you what real justice is it will take you ages to learn what our god truly wants from us so our efforts to explain this to you may not prove quite satisfactory but we from the spirit world want our dear ones and all earth people to know what the truth is to know that you are making many many mistakes just because of some silly notions or because of what some man who is supposed to be holy and philosophical tells you sometimes what they say is quite the opposite of our god almighty's real rules and regulations at this time on earth when evil and bad souls are on top and good souls are suffering we feel this book will explain to you why yes why bad souls seems to succeed and good souls suffer good souls want to blame our dearest god almighty for being unjust towards them so read on my dears and you will find many answers 15th april 1981 improvement through self analysis bad souls can be helped by god almighty if the bad souls so desires bad souls must have the inner instinct and may pray to god almighty to change them God almighty will definitely help them it is entirely in each soul's hands to be good or bad those souls who are bad but want to change can be changed to good souls in no time on earth we have often heard you say confess and god will forgive you this is true but you must confess your sins to yourself and not to a priest a priest has no power to forgive you who is that priest to forgive you he may be more sinful than you are So don't confess to a priest confess to yourself tell yourself that you are bad ask god almighty to help you and you can be sure that he will you must be absolutely sincere i repeat absolutely if you ask god almighty half heartedly it will not help but if you are completely sincere and positive that you need to change let us assure you that he will help you change for the better in no time Now suppose a person thinks he is a good but in reality he is not what about such souls many people think what they are doing is as per god's law they never have an ounce of realization of how sinful they are they will say i believe in god i read holy books i pray every day i go to the temple or church every day or every week 
I give plenty in charity. In I give food, clothing, and jobs to the poor and needy. What more does anyone want? I will surely go to heaven. Sorry to say, these poor souls think that heaven's door is wide open for them, but they will never even reach the lowest ladder of heaven. It is really difficult for a soul on earth to understand this, but it is true. They will not even see the lowest step of heaven. So listen carefully with an open mind. Why are they going to a place of worship every day? Some go to show people around them that they are so pious that they think of God often. Ask yourself, can God Almighty ever be fooled? You can fool your fellow men, but you will never be able to fool God Almighty. You call yourself a God-fearing person? If you really were a God-fearing person, would you ever try to fool God? Some go to place of worship every day or every week to ask God for more money, more happiness and more success. What is this? You are going there for your own selfish motive, not for God but for yourself. Can a selfish motive carry you to heaven? Suppose you are giving a great deal to charity. First ask yourself why? What is your motive behind giving to charity? Your motive is most important. If your motive is entirely selfless, for example, if your motive is only to help someone and it comes automatically, then of course God is pleased and He knows why you gave, which was not to impress Him. But suppose your motive is to get into heaven to impress God Almighty by saying, if I give this to poor person, God will send me to heaven. You can be sure that God knows your motive and you won't be sent to heaven. You can fool each other. You can try to fool yourself, but you can never fool God Almighty. So your motive behind the charity is very, very important. Be sincere in whatever you do. Even a tiny spark will bring you to heaven if you are sincere. But even the largest of charities will take you to hell if you are selfish and try to fool God Almighty. So this is entirely in your own hand, isn't it? 16th April 1981 Justice We are very thankful to God that He needs no proof for our actions, right or wrong, and His justice is absolute. In your word, most of the justice, even by the highest judges, may not always be correct. But God's justice is always right, as He knows you inside and out. If you try to hide something from your fellow man, it may stay hidden. But you cannot hide even a tiny bit from God Almighty. And His justice is always perfect. If you believe this, you will never go wrong. You can be sure that this is absolutely true, and whatever you do, or say is always recorded. So lead a moral, sincere and compassionate life. Try to improve yourself. You may think that no man on earth is perfect. So how could you be? My dear readers, even we here on higher planet or realm in the spirit world are not perfect. How? So how can you be? We are trying so hard to become perfect by gaining the good and discarding the bad. Every soul's goal should be self-improvement so that you can reach God Almighty, the perfect being, and it takes eons to reach Him. So in your life, try very hard, hard to do good, speak good, speak good, good and never, never harm your fellow man. Never be unkind and try very hard not to be hypocrite. You can achieve this if you want to, but the genuine desire should be there. Now since you are on earth, you have more scope to try to improve yourself. Once you come to spirit world, your progress is very slow. So if you really want to improve yourself, do it now. Yes, now is most important. Spirit communications. We are all trying to improve. You on the earth plane and we on the spirit plane. But there is a vast difference between us. You cannot know all truth and we know most of them. You will not know how bad or good your fellow men are. But we know exactly how good or bad a soul is. You cannot read each other's mind. We can read minds up to a point. You cannot see or hear us, but we can see you, hear you, and even know your mind and thoughts. So we can know you better than you can yourself. If you think this is all humbug, let me give you an example. Our dearest mom, who is writing for us, never realized what some people around her were really like. 
she had a bad opinion about a man whom we sought to be good soul and those who she thought were good souls are we saw them as the biggest hypocrites jealous and harmful people so we advised her and first she did not believe us but when she and our dad asked questions all around they found to their surprise that what we said was true they found out what they might not have if we haven't told them about how bad and sinful some souls near them really were so my dear readers if you can communicate with your dear ones who are in the spirit world and take their guidance you will definitely know which person is good and which one is not in this way you can know them whom to trust and whom not you all have fixed ideas about so many things which cause you go wrong this is why we are guiding you all through this communication evil souls are very difficult to improve but there are countless chances to improve even evil souls once you gain their confidence numerous wonderful things have happened through spirit communication you can even take souls on earth out of their misery by conveying a message from their loved ones who have departed from your world not everyone can receive messages from the spirit world but we are sure that those who can communicate are willing to help others i'm sorry to say that people on earth can be very foolish sometimes even a cup full of happiness near their mouths is like a poison to them they are foolish not to believe in spirit communications or in the soul and life after death we feel very sorry for such souls as they are stunned when they come to spirit world 18 april 1981 the story of the old man and the brook now we would like to tell you a very good story about something that happened with us a little while ago in the spirit world there was an old man sitting near our favorite brook it is very rare to see an old man here for as a soul becomes wiser it becomes younger here so we were very surprised to see him we asked him are you a newcomer sir he said yes young man how did you know that he said it was instinct he said you seem to be a wise young man so i'm sure you will show me the way home he asked well where is your home and he gave us the address of his home on earth we laughed and told him sir you are not on earth you are in the spirit world we told him that he was a newcomer to the spirit world he looked at us as if we had come out of asylum and then said very meekly i thought you were wise as i have somehow arrived at this vacation spot yes i am a newcomer to this place vacation he said sir you have come home from your vacation he replied my god he's a real mad man i must run away and he fled we felt very sorry for him so we called one of our higher souls to join us and approached him again his face went white and he said my god now there are three lunatics what can i do and he began shouting out a name later we learned that it was a name of his son on earth no matter how much we tried to explain the situation to him he refused to believe that the spirit world could be so beautiful that you could live in a place of such beauty after your death on earth we had to call some more high souls who could tactfully explain the situation we all got together explain everything to him and showed him around after some time he believed us and realized that we were telling him the truth then he became very friendly and said all the while i was afraid to die on earth thinking that after death we would have to sleep in eternal peace on a very barren cloud where only angels can fly we laughed and told him we had never seen an angel flying here so he said oh that means we are not in heaven so how beautiful must heaven be we laughed again and explained to him this is a higher realm and it is heaven but the highest realm is of course the most beautiful beyond our imagination he became a little less old then as a wisdom seeped into his subconscious mind which began to open he got a bit wiser but he still had a lot to learn he was very surprised that the land of eternal peace could be so beautiful and that instead of resting we were all so lively and full of um, jest from this story you can tell how people on earth are so ignorant of the spirit world and are traumatized when they find out what is it really like so dear people on earth prepare yourself for the spirit world 
through spirit communications and be sure to lead your life according to the godly good path so that you can reach the higher realms in april 1981 understanding god's law our fellow spirit beings here would like us to let the people of earth know what the real laws of god are as people from earth are ignorant of such laws we would like to give this knowledge to them and by all means we have full faith that they will believe us and use this knowledge for the good of humanity there are many false notions that lead you entirely astray from the laws of god almighty many of god's laws have been misunderstood just try this game we played this game at parties when we were young sit in a circle and have a person start a sentence by whispering it to the person besides him then pass on the sentence by whispering it from one person to the next by the time it reaches the one who started it and it will be absolutely different in the same way the laws of god almighty started from a point where they were absolutely correct but when they were passed down through the ages some truths are altered not only but part april 20th 1981 how we died and the realms of the spirit world now we would like to tell you more about the spirit world so that you can understand how we live here and what a wonderful spirit world you could be in if you follow all god almighty's law and lead a good life we would like to tell you what lower realms are like what evil souls should expect and what good souls can expect let's start from our death so that we can explain to you what happened how we went to the spirit world and where the spirit world is we were traveling by a car slow and steady as we had to free the engine which we had worked on a few hours earlier we were driving home on the highway and as i whispy slowly drove the car i realized that all uh, all the others were asleep i slowed down some more as the potholes were so bad that a bumpy ride might have woken everyone up we drove towards our earth home but at the time i never realized of course that my brother ratu and i were actually moving towards our real heavenly spirit world home all of sudden a terrible form black huge and horrible came in my way i swerved the car a little to my left and tried to apply the brakes but the brakes failed and i saw a tree ahead of me the car smashed into that tree then i saw myself outside of my physical body i saw my physical body lying on the grass and i realized i was no longer in my physical body but in my light spiritual body i also realized that i felt no pain or discomfort that's when i knew i was dead to the earth world i looked all around me and saw no one a shout escaped from my lips oh god no one has come to welcome me to the spirit world after a few seconds i noticed a soul standing beside me i was overjoyed as he looked like my brother ratu i hugged and kissed him and said ratu at least we are together The soul smiled and said, "Vipsi, I'm not Ratu. Ratu is over there, still breathing in his physical body." I looked, I looked down at Ratu, but the other soul looked so similar that I pleaded, "Whoever you may be, please, please, for God's sake, save Ratu! Don't let him die on Earth, as my mom and dad will be alone. Who will look after them?" He very kindly told me, "Vipsi, my dearest, it's not in our hand. It's in God's hand, and Vipsi." I am your grandfather. So this was my mom's father whom we used to call papa or popsy. I had not recognized him when he died. He was much younger looking than when he had died in 1974. At the time of his passing he was 93 year old. Now in 1980 when he left earth he looked about 30 years old and somewhat like my brother Ratu I hugged him and requested him again to do something to save ratu papa explained again we see my dearest it is not at all in our hand just let us pray to god as i am also feeling miserable about this what will my dearest daughter do without you too as we joined our hands in prayer and said oh god 
Ratu came out of his physical body too. He stood there, sad and miserable, thinking of my mom and dad. Ratu saw me and we noticed his smeared up car, smashed up car. But he did not see his physical body lying on the grass. He shouted at the top of his voice. He had a loud hoarse voice. I heard his same earthly voice but much louder. What have you done to my car? Then he saw Papa and recognized him. Papa, you are here. Where am I? Papa, you are dead. What are you doing here? Then he spoke to me again. Tell me what you have done to my car. We explained to him that we were dead to the earth world. Like me, Ratu also said, Oh God, what will happen to mommy and daddy? We sat st- staring at our physical bodies, wondering if there was a way to for us to go back into our bodies for the sake of our dearest mom, dad and Gina, Mipsi's two and a half year old daughter. But we were summoned up. Some of our friends and relatives also came and we all prepared to go up together. There was a high good soul with us who said, Vipsi, Ratu, close your eyes. And we felt as if we were going up at a great speed. When we arrived at our destination, we were asked to open our eyes and we saw the most wonderful place, our beautiful spirit world home. Because we were very sad and in a state of shock, we were taken to huge hall by a few good, few high good souls. That hall is called the Hall of Rest. We were asked to lie down on the soft and feather-like, or shall we say, cloud-like couch, where we fell asleep. After a while, I woke up and saw Ratu lying beside me on the couch. Some rays were being given to him. A high good soul came to me and told me to follow him. I said, I will stay here as Ratu is still not properly rested. The high good soul said, No, you must come with me. You cannot stay here any longer. Ratu will meet you outside when he is properly rested. I was laid outside and there I saw Papa, my friends and my relatives all waiting for us to come out of the hall of rest. After some time we saw Ratu come out too. Then we decided that since we could not go back to our mom and dad, we would have to help them take this horrible blow courageously. April 21st, 1981, the seven realms of planes. If you come here after a short or a long illness, your departed friends and relatives may be around to welcome you. But if your death is sudden, they may take a while to come down to welcome you. But you can be sure they will come, except if you are in the lower realms. In that case, don't expect any good soul to welcome you. Evil souls, however, may be ready to take you to the lower realms. There are seven realms or planes in the spirit world. In each realm, there are ten stages from zero to nine. So realm one zero would mean realm one stage zero. Realm one. It is the lowest and darkest and also nearest to the earth. It is most horrible place. There are bare rocks with growling creatures. Human souls with disfigured bodies and horrible minds, full of bad feelings. Their bodies are much heavier than ours. They live in the barren world, traveling about on the rocks in pitch darkness. They never see even a tiny spark of light at any time. Realm 2 is also horrible, but not as dark as Realm 1. Nor are the bodies so heavy and or disfigured. They also live in rocky caves hitting each other and using filthy, terrible language, seeing no light or good things. Realm 3 is still better, but yet there is no light. The bodies are lighter than realms than in realms 1 and 2. The atmosphere is extremely heavy and foggy, and their bodies look human, but are older looking and imperfect. The souls on realm 3 have bad feelings for each other, and they blame each other for everything. They catch souls who have arrived on realm 3 for the first time and make these souls their slaves, forcing them to help them in their evil ways. Realm 4 is an in-between realm. It is more or less like earth where there is both light and day. It is the realm in which human soul starts its life journey. You are given the chance to go up or down from realm 4, stage 5, and it is entirely in your hand. Realm 5 
is the beginning of heaven. It's like a beautiful place on earth. There is a little brightness in the sky at all times. Souls on this realm are helpful to each other. Their bodies are much lighter and there are no deformities. Realm 6 is very beautiful, full of wonderful bright green grass, trees and flowers of colors you cannot see on earth. It is always bright throughout, like a sunny day. The souls have nearly perfect, very light bodies. And they all live in harmony and love, helping each other and doing work that they love. If you are on realm 6 and above, your subconscious mind, what we call conscious, which is your true spiritual mind, will work in such a way that it will stop you from committing those sins on earth that would take you lower than realm 4. Realm 7 is the highest. The people on earth would never even imagine how beautiful it is. The beauty of Realm 7 has to be seen to be believed. It is beyond any power of description. Yes, it is beyond imagination. Souls on this realm have the brightest, most perfect, young-looking spirit bodies. They are as light as clouds. They live in utmost harmony and love. It is more than heaven. After Realm 7, what? We don't know. Just as people on earth don't know much about the spirit world, after realm 7 stage 9, we do not reincarnate anymore on earth. But our spiritual journey continues. Those are realm 7 are almost perfect, purified souls. But if they reincarnate on earth and somehow sin even a little, then they go to down to realm 5 or 6. So it is always in every soul's own hands whether to take God's good path or go down the evil dark path. April 22nd, 1981 Our real home We all know that it is good to leave from earth and go to the spiritual world. The spirit world is our real home. We go to earth for a short time and return home. We go to earth to gain experience. Earth is our school where we have to learn, gain experience and try to purify our souls to reach higher level. Earth people have no memories of their real home, the spirit world. If you had that memory, you would never think of staying on earth for even a minute. So God has given you no memory of your real home, your real lived one, loved ones and how beautiful the spirit world is. God has kept it this way so you will not be keen to return without first completing your training and schooling. God is so sure that you would have to live on earth if, if you remember the spirit world. So he has entirely blocked that memory from your physical mind. But your spiritual mind, also known as your subconscious mind, has full memory of the spirit world. However, the subconscious mind does not reveal this memory to your physical logical mind. If the subconscious mind is dormant in a person on earth, the person will not know God's real laws. We want you to be aware of this fact so you can awaken your subconscious mind as people on earth are going from bad to worse. We want you to know the truth and be brave enough to follow the right path. April 23, 1981 Beasts of Burden Very good souls suffer greatly and evil souls seem to go scot-free on earth. You often hear people cry out, is this God justice? Very good souls must go through all kinds of training and gain experience. For this, they must suffer to rise to the higher level. The more success evil souls reap on earth, the deeper in hell they will go. There is no other way out because one day everyone has to die and come to the spirit world. So the more success bad people experience on earth, the more pitiful is their experience when they come to spirit world. If evil or bad souls succeed in harming others, Pity them because they will definitely go down to the lowest realm and suffer the utmost. So don't envy them and say, see the evil person is happy and successful. Instead, ask God to do what is best for that person. The person must die in your world and the day will come when his soul has to face the lowest realm and endure extreme suffering for ages and ages to come. You must not say that there is no such thing as God's justice. When evil souls go beyond certain limit, they suffer the most. The lowest realm means pitch dark, humid, cold, bare rocks and creepy things crawling all over you. There is no hope to see even a tiny bit of light or anything good. 
these evil creatures have distorted limbs and are therefore forced to crawl they have horrible looking faces and their clothes are old tattered rags they are half human and half beast there is another way of going through your punishment if you truly repent and your call to god is genuine you get to be born and suffer as a beast of burden which will be little better than the lowest of all the lower realms as a beast of burden you have full memory of the sins of your previous lives on earth you go on suffering remembering your sin you had committed and you repent for it you can be sure that such souls do become beast of burden and not pets that are treated kindly this does not mean that human being should treat any living being unkindly good souls never want to see as they would hate to be in evil souls place it is so terrible that we have no words to describe it if you can try to improve evil souls so that they don't go to the lowest of the low realms if they are successful in their evil ways be sure it will be worse for them in a few years so it is your duty to try hard to improve them by showing them what they are never encourage them uh, in their ways by uh, being nice to them but show them how wrong they are april 24th 1981 is it godly to help everyone it is great privilege to know the real laws of god almighty you must have heard people say it is godly to help everyone yes of course it is godly to help but not everyone it is good to help your fellow men but you cannot help all your fellow men as some are positively evil it is up to you to find out which people you should help and which people you should not because if you help an evil soul you are encouraging evil so have you done right is this what god wants you to do think and you will understand that you are harming yourself as well as the evil soul you will say i won't help an evil person in murdering or harming anyone we do understand you wouldn't do that but if you help that evil person by even giving food money or clothing to him is it wrong yes it is absolutely wrong it is wrong because by giving him this he sustains his energy and continues to do more evil so it is against god's laws to give even a little help to such souls as they will go on harming others if you help them be firm with an evil person if you are not firm you are encouraging him by doing so you you are also of the same category of the same sinfulness suppose you pass a starving man lying on the road and you feel it is your duty to give him some food some money you cannot ask him whether he is an evil person and if he is evil he would definitely not tell you the truth so you don't know at all whether he is evil or good and your heart tells you to give him something because he is starving if your heart says so you have to give him something because you are absolutely ignorant of that man's character but if you knowingly give charity to the evil person or help him it means you yourself are also evil otherwise you would not give an evil person any kind of help you would say but he was starving so should i watch him die of hunger no it is not humane so give him food but never help him in other way except when that evil person was repented for his deeds this means he has really repented and keenly and genuinely wants to improve in that case you must help him in whatever way you can it is your duty to help bring him out of evil fears progress to the higher level that is real good deed but you should only give him full support if he really repents and genuinely wants to improve help a good man in doing good go out of your way to help good but make sure your deed is selfless your action should be purely selfless that's what you should know about helping people and we are sure you will never go wrong april 25th 1981 earthly crimes versus sins Many times we have heard and also said God helps those who help themselves. This is absolutely true. It is a real law of God Almighty. Suppose you are on lower realm, but have the genuine desire to go to the higher level, and you truly try to improve, God will do His best to help you. God Almighty wants you to rise spiritually. He wants you to be really happy. So if you show a little inclination towards improvement, you will get a lot of help. Many people on lower level will say. I have harmed no one. I was God-fearing man, and I never committed crimes. 
you may have never committed crimes but you may have committed many sins god is not concerned with the laws of people on earth have been what is considered a crime in your world may not be a sin and what is a sin may not be a crime for example it is not a crime to be selfish not it is a crime to show the world that you are a good soul when inside you are black as darkness no it is not a crime but it is a big sin so you see many of your crimes the breaking of man made laws are not sins sinning means breaking god's made laws many sins are not counted in your world as wrong the people on earth are mistaken about god's almighty's real laws there are many sins that are taken lightly and some that are not even thought of as sins so isn't it better for the people on earth to know which sins will put you on the lower levels of the spirit world which is your real home april 26 1981 you have to pay for your sins now pay careful attention as this is very important you must not make any mistake in understanding this it is said that if evil people leave their evil ways and walk on the right path god will take over yes god does take over and help them to rise higher but this does not mean he forgives them and welcomes them to heaven as soon as the evil people say they want to be on the good side definitely not you have to pay for your sins no matter what but if you have genuine desire to change god will definitely help you that will only happen when you truly repent for your sins and god is sure that you will not go back to your old ways only then will he help you rise to up sooner rising up sooner does not mean god will take you straight to the higher realms it means he will guide you and teach you to pay off your karma in a good manner he will guide you in this way so you can reach the higher levels much sooner than you could otherwise you should be you should by no means believe that if you are an evil at one moment and then think of god and worship him the next you will reach heaven it is silly to confess to a priest and think that god has forgiven you as i said before the priest may be more of sinner than you who is he to forgive you only god almighty can forgive you for your sins but not before you truly repent your inner motive a genuine desire to change for the better is the only thing that matters your inner desire must be to reach god almighty by leading a true honest and kind life a person may be quite ordinary and no one may bother to look at him twice or no one may even care to answer his humble questions he may be nobody in your world but in the spirit world he may be even higher than any famous man on earth so you see for you on earth it is difficult to judge a real good soul from the evil soul there is a vast difference between these souls but you would still never be able to differentiate between them because you are absolutely blind to the vibrations and the aura of the soul yes it is most difficult for you to understand who is good soul, good soul and who is evil many times people on earth have thought a person to be very holy and pious but that person may be an extremely evil soul our advice to you is that if you can communicate safely with the spirit world take a guidance so that you will not be fooled and dragged to the lower level by the constant company and influence of evil souls april 27 1981 the devil does not exist it is said that there is a devil who will tempt you well let us tell you that there is no devil in our universe but there are many devils as there are evil people here on the lower levels of the spirit world as well on your earth plane these devils have made your world a hellish place to live in on earth you all live together good souls bad souls and then evil souls but here in the spirit world good souls do not live with bad or evil souls all good souls together all bad souls together all evil souls together in the spirit world you need not fear that an evil soul will harm you or a bad soul will fool you here all good souls live together in harmony love and help each other and never harm anybody bad souls live together and fool each other they have jealousy dishonesty and had feelings for each other they harm each other even torture each other 
mentally. But bad souls who want to improve just have to call for help. If this call is genuine, help will immediately come from higher realm. Many kind souls from higher realm will go to there and try to bring them out of their misery. Evil souls on the lowest realms find it very difficult to rise spiritually as the evil souls around them will try to make them more evil and not let them improve. As evil souls allow no goodness to come out of their souls, it is most difficult but not impossible for them to improve. Even the worst kind of evil soul will improve in a very limited time, but some evil souls maintain on the lowest realms for centuries as they have no desire whatsoever to improve. Such souls try to prevent others who have the desire to advance from improving because they don't want to be alone. So you see it is very difficult to rise from lower realms. But as we said it is not impossible if you genuinely repent. So dear readers, these are the real devils, the ones who try to try hard to make others evil like themselves. If other desires to rise to higher realms, they try their levels best to discourage them and even harm them as much as possible so that they don't rise. Now let's talk about God Almighty. They are, there is no need to tell you about God as everyone knows about Him, our Heavenly Father, King of our universe and several other universes. God is full of love, kindness, justice and wisdom. He's just a Lord of Heaven who will never misjudge a soul. His sole intention is to improve you, help you throw away all your evil feelings. Purify your soul and make you happy. He has several helpers to gu guide souls to even the lowest of realms. So you can be sure that his kindness and love will never fail. And that he is the only one who can bring even the most evil of souls to the higher realms. This completes the first 20.